Once upon a time, there were two best friends. One of them had a computer, and the other one sucked. Okay, hello everybody, welcome to Chillin' with the Villains. First idea. question immediately. If you had to change your like hands into like one animal's appendages, what would it be? Because mine would be baboon ass or crab claws. Why why baboon ass? Red and huge. <laughs> what what is the tactical advantage? None. Just baboon ass for hands. It's not really hands anymore. The baboon ass on my stuff. You might as well just have have stubs because that that is all you have. No, uh, you know the the tactical advantage is that you also have uh, your gastrointestinal tract throughout your arms, so you can spray shit at people. We well, didn't say you could change your arms. You're right. I didn't. You it just it is you for this case. <laughs> My thing only. Also. You, you only said baboon ass, not baboon oh, asses. Yeah, or baboon so I, asshole. I am like one singular cheek on each uh, stub. That's what I was seeing. Ponching. De- <laughs> default boxing glove. <laughs> that makes your punches less effective. Alternatively, it makes your punches smell real bad. <laughs> no, but like actually probably crab claws or like praying mantis arms. So that I could just be like... Why would you not go for tentacles? I got a tentacle down here. <laughs> it's small and tiny, but it works. No, but I mean like an actual, like, like tentacle. Like, they're, they're very versatile. They, they are. They, do, do they have suction cups or are they, or, or are they smooth? Yeah, both. Retractable suction cups. You know what? I'm turning my answer around to crab claws. Plus, think about <laughs> think about the fucking uh, business you could get in the porn industry. Dude, yeah. You'd be real killer in, in the hentai industry. <laughs> we would like to draw your likeness, sir. <laughs> Please grace us with your pornographic countenance. I'm just saying, you know, that's, there's, a, there's a lot of money to be made. Anyway, yeah, this is chilling with the villains. Baboon ass central. <laughs> Back again, once again, with the no visual content. Put this on in the background. Warm up some lube and just start jerking it while you listen to my sultry, smoothie, buttery voice. <laughs> Your voice is like getting punched with a baboon's ass. <laughs> Take that, idiots. <laughs> So, like, earlier this morning, right, so, Tokyo and I hadn't eaten until literally lunch yesterday, like, and then we ate when we came home a few hours ago. This morning, I was not only nauseous, I was fucking, like, feverish delusional. And then, like, I start drinking caffeine at work, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I can make it through this, and then, like... 237 hits and I'm just like I want to die <laughs> what what fucking ethereal omniscient presence out there decided yes you should go both without food and medical attention drink this caffeine idiot do it bitch you, and I did it <laughs> you did that that was your idea it was that means you just admitted that I'm an ethereal omniscient presence no you're just I am a the man spirit who wants... of stu- I'm the spirit of vengeance and stupidity. You're just a man who wants a baboon's ass for hands. Yeah, dude. Look at all that stinky punching. <laughs> okay. So, this is just going to be... I'm going to call this the hypotheticals episode. So, like... Say you're, you're canonized in Christian, uh, in Christian lore, right? Uh-huh. As a saint. What are you the patron saint of? Ah, fuck. Because I would probably be, like, the patron saint of batting out of your league. <laughs> Am I wrong? Matt, Matt, what would you be the, what would you be the what? patron saint Yes, of? Q-Bear. The patron saint of? Yeah. yeah. If you were a patron saint. If you were canonized into Christian canon. Oof. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, maybe like passion projects. So like the like the patron saint of like 
passion projects or like patron saints of like impulse? Mm. I mean, I'd like to paint myself in a better light, so let's go with passion. <laughs> I feel like... Like, you know, when you're just, like, laid up at night and you're like, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I want to be an EMT. Be like, boom, that's the patron state of Matty Bear right there. Yeah. Just helping you out. Looking out for you. Be like, ah, yes. I no longer want to do this thing I focused on for a few years. You know, you know that time of day where, like, what, what do they call it? Magic hour? I golden think? hour? Golden hour. Yeah. yeah. You know golden hour? Yeah. Where just... Uh, pictures or like the lighting, lighting is, is perfect, perfect yeah. and you know people look extra beautiful. I would be the patron saint of the antithesis of that. <laughs> of oh, shit hour. <laughs> yeah, just like bad angles, double chin popping out, stress pimples are, are exactly <laughs> the lights come on at the club at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you've been you dancing with a foot. Like when your beer goggles are powerful but not powerful enough. <laughs> when the when you when it turns out they're a butter everything. Okay, so now if you were a demon, what would you be the demon of? I would still probably be the demon of batting out of your league. <laughs> demon of anything. Like realistically, I'd probably be like. I feel like I would be, like, the demon of unreasonable expectations. Because you know me. I'll get, like, I will get in my head that, like, this is how this thing is supposed to be performed or done. And I'm, then even when I, like, even if I'm unable to do it, I'm just like, why can nobody do this the way it should be done? I, I, would, I would probably be the demon that goes down to Georgia and thinks that he can, like, he's desperate... And he needs to get a soul. And he convinces himself somehow that he can play the fiddle. <laughs> but we all know he can't. Well, like, bless his heart. I mean, it's the band that makes him better. Well, yeah, but he's if he can't play the fucking... He bet a fiddle of gold. You know how much, how many demon paychecks that must have run him? Like, at least, like, three, yeah, three I mean, months. <laughs> I probably got a pretty good deal for it, though. <laughs> a soul? He, I don't know. I, I, he went to Demon Walmart, Demon Guitar Center, and just got it on like, sale. Like, do you think the demon accountants are down there just like, Jesus Christ, man. Fucking again, Gary? <laughs> Listen, where, you, do you, where do you think accountants and lawyers go? <laughs> That's true. You're dipping into the company accounts, dude. Where did you even get a fiddle made of gold? Why was it the only thing you brought to Georgia? <laughs> Could have bought a gun, <laughs> yeah, a like, contract. Like, could you imagine the demon of the gun just being like, "I bet a bullet to your face." <laughs> Dumb one down to Georgia. He was looking for soul to shoot. <laughs> Give me just mug the demon of the mugging. There we go. <laughs> Pick one religion slash mythology, and then pick a god in that mythology slash religion. Who would you be? Good thing I can't do you guys a favor. Well, I'm doing you a disservice. (laughs) I might shit myself if I do that. Yes. Um. You know. You know what I kind of like. It's a little random. But uh, Prometheus. Oh yeah, Prometheus right. is cool. Yeah. Prometheus is. I can't remember if he's a god or a titan. He's a titan. He's a titan. But he, you know, he steals fire and brings it to man and ends up paying for it. But there's still kind of like a. You know, maybe it's very white knight weeaboo of me, but like. It martyrdom. Yeah, it's like martyrdom for like the greater. Like there are people, and then you you bring you bring a great knowledge to them or a great light to them. Regardless of what it is that happens to you. Yeah, I mean, I always thought that it was kind of funny that, like, people even worshipped gods Mm -hmm. in that pantheon. Yeah. Given that the gods specifically tried to keep fire from men. It was more Sikh patronage. Yeah. Worship, as far as I understand it. Yeah. So it was less of, like, 
oh, I love you so much. It was more like, oh, aren't you so sexy? You want to give me a little extra shot in my drink as I squeeze my boobies together? Like, that was more of what they were going for, I think. And Zeus fell for it. Yeah. Every time. Every time, time and time again. Every time. Yeah. And for some reason did it as multiple animals. I mean, like, who doesn't wake up in the morning and wants to turn into a goose and go get some sweet tang? Yeah. Well, I heard the pretty geese. girls don't pay their bills here. They don't. Slams tab down. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I think I would probably be Izanagi no Makoto. Simply because I, too, turn into a horrible monster when you look at me. <laughs> No, like, I, there's always been something that's so cool to me of, like, fucking Izanagi goes down to the underworld to save his one love, right? Mm. And then he finds her, and she's just like, I'll be able to get out of here and be restored to my former self if you just don't fucking look at me this whole time. And then, like, right at the end, this stupid motherfucker Izanagi turns around, and there she is, a horrible fucking monster woman. And he ruined it, because he's fucking horny on Maine. So yeah, I'd be I- Izanami no Makoto, because I too get pissed when people look at me and turn into a monster. Um, let's see, what would I go for? I don't know, I, I'm, a, I'm a particular fan of some, some Norse mythology, you know? Could be the world snake. You would be Fenrir. Fenrir. The dire wolf. That would make sense. You would be Fenrir. No, Fenrir, he, he's the one that devours... Uh, Odin, I believe. And also, he's one. Of, he's one of the harboring the uh, harbingers of Ragnarok. Harbingers, yeah, of Ragnarok. He's he he devours something. I think he devours uh, Idrisil, doesn't he? It. He might even devour the whole world. I think yeah. the I, last he, he devours man, something very important. The last man and woman are supposed to go into Idrisil and then emerge on the other side of Ragnarok. Yeah. And I, I think he devours... I can't remember if he devours the world or the snake devours the world. Yeah. I feel I like there's know. also a snake that devours the world. There is. There's a world snake. Yeah. But the, I don't remember... I mean, Norse mythology is so cool. Yeah, I mean, super obsessed with, like, the apocalypse. Yeah. But also believing that it had happened several times. Yeah. And it's probably... Yeah, that it was again. a continuous cycle yeah. that they were just in the middle of one part of. You know, like, the only problem I have with, like, the mythology ones, like, Egyptian, Greek... The Greek and Roman ones, I think, are better documented. And the same. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but they're all, like, later writings about them. Yeah. They didn't... As far as we know... And this... I was talking to your girlfriend's mom. I don't know if you... Yeah. Know, on the, story, the show. Mother girl. She, she, she's the one who told me that, like, we don't really know... That was sweet what fucking those ancient jump. people believed. We have an idea, um, but like we don't know their exact practices, or yeah. rituals, and stuff. And she, as far as I know, has a degree in old religions. Yeah, I, I mean, I I believe she did uh, archaeological digs yeah. and stuff as well. I know she spent a large amount of time in uh, Egypt. Um, and I know that the the Norse sagas were written after Christianity was introduced. I'm pretty sure by Christian monks. Yeah. On their view of the of their religion. So I don't know. It's just sometimes I wonder what got lost in translation or got lost in perception or, or was just, just flat like, out covered well, up. Yeah, like made up. Right. It was censored in a way, yeah. you know, I mean it's hard to believe that the Norse mythology was censored in any way, shape, or form if you've ever read any of them. But <laughs> who knows what was, you know? Yeah. What was changed or censored? Not to put a whole raindrop on that whole conversation. Well, I mean, it's like, I, I that. Yeah, you ruin things. That's what you do. Yeah, it's <laughs> you're the god of you're, right, you're the, you're the <laughs> demon of ruined things. The, the gods are sitting up there with a sweet ass fire, and I'm like, you know who needs this fire? <laughs> the mud people down there. All right, what's the next topic? Next topic. Um, what type of tree are you? What? what type of tree? Yeah. Is that. What, and what does that say about question? your per- and what does that say about your personality? It's still that's just making the sa- it's the same question just in a BuzzFeed <laughs> format. Yeah, what do the fuck do you think this like the hypotheticals episode is about? I mean, I'm just saying like is that an interesting question? Do people want it? Do, does anyone care about that? Yeah. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, hypothetically, if we all the whole world spoke 
Okay. What language would you pick? Russian. I'm not, I'm not talking politically, I just mean like the way that the language sounds to you, that you'd be like, yes, this is the one. That I would Russian or Italian. Like I do act like Russian to me is the most fascinating language to hear. And like listening to actual Italian speak actual Italian, it's just really like um, engrossing. Like because it's both quick, but also like very elegant. And then Russian just sounds really fucking cool. That's it. It's partially the reason why I wanted to learn Russian. I have been. You know, I'm actually stuck between both English and Japanese. I know English is the dumb answer to this question, mm -hmm. but, like, it's a pretty cool language. Yeah. We, we can actually accomplish a lot with the English language yep. that other languages might struggle more at. It's pretty adaptable. And, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um... But probably Japanese, nonetheless. Yeah. Um, thing is, it with both of those, they both have accents. Yeah. Sure. They both and have various accents. So if you're talking about I mean, the way that it sounds, and, and there, there are people who speak English that I would imagine I would not understand, and there are plenty of people who up. live within our neighborhood who don't understand the English that I speak. So I know you guys barely understand the English I speak sometimes. Goo goo gaga. <laughs> It's not the language <laughs> that we don't understand. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's the intelligence behind the language <laughs> that's hard to find sometimes. McBongles, McDougles, cheese McDouble. What about you, young, young I, bear? I actually would pick uh, German because I like its ability to mix, mm -hmm. kind of just like make a word. Like you could... If you didn't know the word for something, you could put a bunch of words together and just make a word. Yeah. Even if it was kind of a contradictory word to explain what it is that you were feeling or what's going on inside of your mind or what you're trying to express. I like the ability to do that. You know what I'm saying? And have people still understand you. Instead of having to make a whole sentence where you walk around what it is that you try to say and you try to use different You could just say, like, happy, sad. I am happy, sad. Like, okay, like, I get that. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, you can do that in English, too. It's just we, we try to, like, as a society, I think. Bottom test. American society, we, we, we shy away from. Um, kind of indirect explanation. Yeah, like primitive, mm -hmm. you know, like that. Like, we feel like we have to be more sophisticated in our explanation of what we're trying to feel. Right. Than just throwing two words together. But you totally can, just as you did with happy, sad. Like, yeah. that is totally an emotion that people can feel. But if it was grammatically correct, that's what I'm saying. In terms of what language you pick. Is that not grammatically correct? To say happy, sad? Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, you could hyphenate it. Yeah. Um, but I'm You can sure fix everything with hyphenation. I, I mean, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But and maybe it's not even about grammatically correct. Or just more common that that could that that was just a more common practice that new words or not even new words it would just you would have some baseline words to work with like you, would, you would like a lot of Chinese I yeah. think I, I, if you were to learn any Mandarin yeah um, they do a lot of that they do a lot of that what what was the one that I just saw the other day it was penguin mm -hmm. um, which is a combination of two words I think it's formal chicken. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's something like that. It's formal something, another type of bird. Yeah. I think it might be chicken. But yeah, I think it's formal chicken. Yes. Which is so, th this is funny a, to me. <laughs> this is still on the whole language thing, but it's just total sidebar. So as, as you people all know or might know, I worked at a subway for a period of time when we were living in a different state. And uh, I had a Hispanic... Um, a Hispanic woman was the shift before mine. So when I was like, you know what? I do have a lot of Hispanic people that come in here who speak pretty much only Spanish and I want to be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So I learned some basic ingredient names, lettuce, lechuga. Um, I forget what tomato is, but specifically as she was like for olive, it was olivio uh, negro. So black olives. And she was, and she just goes, don't say that when black people are here. <laughs> Because they'll think you're talking about it. <laughs> this has happened to me before. And I was just like, 
Yeah, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that heads up. <laughs> because uh, I, I had a regular. He was a black dude. Super cool. We were tight. I'd see him. I'd immediately know what his sandwich was. Italian nine grain wheat, double turkey, provolone, toasted honey mustard, light lettuce. And then wrap that shit up, get him out of there so he can go home, get real fucking high, get real drunk, whatever the fuck that he liked to do after his night classes and then go to bed. Hmm? There was one time I did actually say that, <laughs> just kind of instinctively, because usually um, when I would speak uh, just the like ingredients in Spanish, it was they were they were typically just the Spanish speakers in the, in the uh, building, and he came in when I said Olivio Negro, and he was just like, he was like, "Are you talking about me?" I'm like, "No, I said black olives." He was like, "Oh, yeah, I should know that. I speak Spanish." <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's actually more than enough time. Yeah, I think that's guys, good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I always like hypotheticals, but you know, I'm happy to, happy to come back next week when you guys let me out of the cage. We, we, do, we do keep Once him in the a cage. Week, <laughs> we let him out just to roam, maybe pee a little, nibble on some grass, and then hypothetically we shove him back in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, in theory, we could keep him in the cage all the time, but unfortunately he keeps winning... The goddamn fiddle competition. <laughs> <laughs> why do we? Why do we not insist on the gun competition? I'm, I'm running out of. I'm seriously. The accounts. They're starting to get real pissed off. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.